You may have heard of the language Haskell and got interested, and that is probably why you click this video, but you also may only have experience with uh, languages like C, C++, C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, Python. Now, what is the difference between those languages and Haskell? Well, the most classic languages are imperative, which means that when you write a program in such a language, you give explicit orders to the computer in which order to execute some steps to get to the desired result. For instance, when you would sum up the numbers in a list, you would say, uh, set the temporary result to zero. For each number in the list of numbers, add that number to the result, and finally return that result to me. In Haskell, a declarative language, you don't give explicit orders to the computer, but you describe what the solution looks like. The same example, summing up the list of numbers. In Haskell, you would say something like, the sum of the empty list is defined to be zero, and the sum of a non-empty list is defined to be the first item plus the sum of the rest of the numbers. This is a recursive definition. Those two solutions might not look very different, and not the, the, the one or the other might not be particularly more clear in its intent. But when you write larger, larger programs, it's uh, very nice to be able to just describe what the solution should be and leave the order in which things have to be executed to the computer, to the compiler. Um, uh, especially uh, when you have experience with writing in object-oriented languages, you may uh, have noticed that you have to think about what happened before this function was called. What will happen after this function is called? Will this uh, object be initialized with the correct value? Um, do I have to uh, call another method first before I can do this? Or can I just use the result of this other variable that is passed to me? Uh, in functional languages, none of those questions make much sense because the order of execution depends purely on what inputs a function gets and what outputs it can provide. That makes uh, composing larger programs of smaller functions very nice to do. And I'm very excited to show you how that would work, but it will be in a later episode. But let us look at the language Haskell. Um, we are not going to install it on our system. I'm not going to uh, uh, tell how to install GHC. There are many uh, guides uh, on the internet. I will uh, put a link to one in the description. Uh, but uh, our goal is to get more comfortable with the syntax and to see what uh, a solution in Haskell looks like. <clears throat> I open the file uh, one.hs. Uh, .hs is the uh, conventional uh, extension for Haskell files. And I will also, in a different screen, uh, open the Haskell uh, GHCI. It's a Haskell interactive REPL um, in which you can enter expressions and they will uh, be evaluated and come back to you. The result will uh, be shown. Uh, you can uh, compare it with the Python REPL or uh, a Lisp REPL. Or if you're familiar with JavaScript, it's uh, like the console in a browser. Um, let's see if we enter 15 plus 15, it uh, gives us back 30, which is correct. And we can also concatenate strings, for instance, hello plus plus world, and it returns hello world. Um, if we write code in this uh, file, we can define functions and we can load the file into the GHCI and then execute or call those functions. So let's write a solution to the sum problem that we already discussed. When we define uh, the function mySum, we can write it like this and say mySum given an empty list is defined to be zero. We can save this and load that file into GHCI. And when we now call mySum with the empty list, 
notice that we are not putting any uh, parents around here because when calling a function in Haskell, we just write the name of the function and then the uh, parameters after it. Uh, when we call this function, my sum, we get the result zero, which was expected because we just wrote that same definition here. Um, however, if we try to call my sum with more than zero items in a list, and we write a list like this, say one, two, three, uh, it will give an error because it does not know what to do if there is not uh, if the list of the first parameter is not the empty list. It is a list with numbers in it. And a summing up a list without knowing what to do with items in the list is very uh, unuseful. So we will add a definition here. The second definition that we talked about was if my sum, uh, if the numbers, if the list of numbers is not empty, we take the first item of that list and then add it to the sum of the rest of the list. Now, uh, when you want to write uh, a non-empty list and at the same time look at the first item and the rest of the items in the list, you can write it like this. You use uh, parents instead of brackets and you say, um, uh, you give a name to the first item and you give a name to the rest of the items. That is the conventional way to do this. It looks, um, it might look a bit confusing, but if you get uh, if you write Haskell for a long time, you will ve get very uh, used to this because it's a very standard way of writing this. Um, you would say uh, the definition of my sum for a non-empty list is that first item plus my sum called on the rest of the list. So what would happen now is if there is only one item in this list, uh, that one item is called x, uh, the rest of the list would be an empty list, and uh, Haskell will then uh, take that number, say, uh, oh, let me show you, if we reload a file here, we call my sum for uh, a list of uh, a single item, the result of course is one. Uh, in the first call, um, Haskell will look into my sum, see that the empty list doesn't match, so it will try another definition. The definition that matches is this one, a non-empty list. X will be the first item, so that will be the number one. Axis will be the empty list. Uh, there are no lists, when, uh, no, no more items when you remove the first item, so it will be the empty list. And then it will call, uh, it, it will see that the definition is uh, x, so 1, plus my sum called on the rest of the list, which would be my sum called on the empty list, uh, which would evaluate to 0. So it would be 1 plus 0, and 1 plus 0 is 1. Uh, it will work for any number of items, because if there are still items left, it will uh, match the second definition, and the second definition will just take the first item calculate the sum of the rest of the items uh, and it will happen uh, again and again and again until it tries to calculate the sum of a empty list because there are no more items left left and the answer is right there again so my sum of one two three would be six and that my sum of one and three will be four um, one and minus one will be zero well, thank you for watching this episode of Haskell Steps. If you enjoyed it, please let me know by pressing the like button. Um, and uh, next time we will solve the tennis kata in Haskell. Uh, I will put a link in the description. It's an interesting problem. It's a small toy problem, but it's uh, interesting uh, to see more Haskell. And we will use that uh, kata again and again in later episodes, to, just to get a little bit more Haskell-y uh, each step. I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.